Hi there, today we're unboxing a robot vacuum. So this particular one is by a company called Homeflow. Details are in the description below for anyone thinking of purchasing. So they also sent me a catalog of the other products they do. They do a lot of smart tech. So if you wanna check them out, you can have a look on their website. It's www.gethomeflow.com. So let's take a quick look around the packaging. This comes really nicely packaged, picture of the robot vacuum there. Some details here, high performance robot vacuum, two times suction power. So they're saying home flow robot vacuum versus the average robot vacuum. They highlight the fact it works with Google Assistant and the Amazon Alexa. Coming around the side here, it says cleaning mode. So you can schedule cleaning mode, auto cleaning mode, spot cleaning mode, and along the wall mode. Coming around the back, it says technology, so it uses Hawkeye technology. The Homeflow robot vacuum maps your home for an optimized and thorough cleaning experience. Anti-drop sensor, the Homeflow robot detects its location and changes direction to avoid falling. Auto docking and recharging, the Homeflow robot vacuum returns to its charging base when cleaning has completed. Wi-Fi connectivity, Homeflow app used to control this. Voice prompts you can use to control it as well, so via Amazon Alexa and the Google Home. Performance wise, it's got super strong suction, they say, and the suction of 2000 PA for 120 minutes non-stop. Dual brush, so two spinning brushes at the side, and they say a sleek design. Specification here, so input is AC 100 to 240 volts, 50 to 60 hertz. Output is DC 14.8 volts. Power is about 28 watts, suction is 2000 PA. Supply is built in 2600 milliampers, high capacity lithium iron with a runtime of 90 to 120 minutes. Okay, volume of the dust container is 600 milliliters and the water tank has capacity of 350 milliliters. Noise levels are below 60 decibels and they also highlight what comes in the package. They say it comes with a two year warranty as well. Coming around this way, it says it's ideal for home with pets, has an anti-drop sensor and vacuum plus mop with this. So let's open it up and see what you get in the packaging. Okay, so I've laid out all the items you get in the packaging, so let me quickly go through them one by one. So you get some documentation, so a user manual, and this is all in English, details on how to set this up and how to operate the device. Then you have a warranty card, app instructions on installing the app for this, water tank operation guide, and quick operation guide. Next we have a HEPA filter. Next you have a cleaning brush, and it has soft bristles on this side and tough plastic there. And there's even a point with a sharp knife in there in case you need to pull out hair stuck in any of the areas. We have a remote, very small compact design to it. Buttons feel okay on there. And coming around the back, you've got an area to put the batteries in and it takes two AAA batteries. Then we have a screwdriver. Then we have side brushes. So two for the left and two for the right and soft brushes on this. And if you look at the back, there's a clipping point for underneath the vacuum. Next, we have a water tank handle on there. And this is the access point where you put your water in. Prohibit soak water tank. So they're saying don't soak the tank directly in water, just let it fill up through the hole there. Coming around here, all strong plastic in design. And if I come here, you can just see the connection points where obviously it will communicate with the vacuum. Coming around this way, you can see the limits on there. So 350 milliliters, and it just shows how to place it in the vacuum and then clean it up. You get two mop pads with this and there's actually a plate which they sit on. So the Velcro on here just sticks down and it can be removed to wash as well. Build quality of this seems fine, all plastic in design and there's some clip points and positioning where it just positions nicely and snugly on the underneath of the vacuum. Next we have a dock for the vacuum and coming in close you've got two metal areas here. They touch the bottom of the vacuum and charge it up. Coming underneath just shows some details there regarding it and has rubber pads to keep it in position so it doesn't easily slide on a wooden floor. 19 volts 0.6 amps coming out of there in terms of output. 
Build quality of it seems reasonable. Cable length wise, you've got 1.4 meters on there and a DC connection point. Let's take a look at the robot vacuum. So in terms of diameter, it's 32 centimeters wide. And in terms of height, it's six and a half centimeters. If you include the wheels while it's sitting in position, it's seven and a half centimeters. We have some protective plastic on there. So let's peel that off and some foam at the side too. So that comes off from here. And there's an area there that comes off. Plastic can just be pulled off. So we've got a power button there. We've got some branding here and a glossy finish on the top. This at the front is the bumper on there. In case it touches anything, it just rebounds off. Coming up here, it's all glossy around there. The rest of the area is a matte finish. You've got the DC connection point there if you want to plug the power in. And you've got an on off button here. Got a vent here. And that's it. Now coming around the bottom, you've got the two wheels. You can feel the motor on each one of these very strong feel to them and then you've got a single wheel there and then you've got the two points where the side brushes go in terms of vacuuming on this there's no roller from what I can see there's just some plastic and it would seem the side brushes direct the dust to this to vacuum it up you've got two points there for charging so that's when it sits on the dock it will charge up looks like we've got a small sensor over here Coming in close, you can see some of the details regarding the vacuum. Build wise, it feels very good, solid build quality to that. And coming here, if I pull this up, this is where the dust tank is. Removing the filter, if I pull that off, top filter's there, so we can leave that in position and the HEPA filter's just over here. So very simple to replace. Looking at the construction of the dust box comes very strong plastic around here and to open it, looks like you've got an area here you lift up, take the filter out here and then you can just empty it out. So we've got a hole here and that's where the dust enters the box from the gap on the vacuum. To install the water tank, it's very easy. Obviously take out the dust container, just put that in like so, close it up and then underneath the vacuum, you take the cleaning attachment and you can see some holes where it will sit into place. So one, two, three and four and the clip areas. So just a matter of just push it into place and that's it, you're ready to mop with this. In terms of removing the mop attachment, very easy. You just pull it up and it just comes away. So it is firmly placed underneath, just to show again, it doesn't fall off easily and very light to pull off. Let's make a start at setting up this vacuum. So initially the remote control, open the back, place the batteries in. Next, the docking station, just remove the plastic here. And on the side, you've got the DC connection point, plug it in, and now it's ready to accept the vacuum for charging. For the vacuum, there's two bits to attach. So first is the left side brush and then you've got the right side brush here. It's just a matter of taking it and pushing it on and it just clips nicely in position. As you can see, it doesn't fall off. Let's plug in the power adapter that's connected to the charging dock. And I'll turn the switch on and you can see a blue light come on indicating it's powered. And then the vacuum itself can sit on there and the button at the side, if I press that, it'll turn it on. Robot. And there you go, green lights come on and there's a Wi-Fi indicator flashing as well. So simple as that to get it plugged in and charging. Let's make a start at setting up this robot vacuum. So I'm at my Android phone. If I go to the Play Store and I search for HomeFlow, this is the app we need to install. But just to note, it also works with Smart Life and Tuya as well. So let's click install to this. Now the app's installed, let's click open, click on register, agree to the privacy policy, and let me register an account for this off camera. I've registered an account and these are my details, so let me click login. And this is what you're initially presented with. Now to add the robot vacuum, we click on the plus icon, we go to small home appliances, and then we've got robot vacuum just over here. 
Next, we need to confirm the light on the robot vacuum is flashing, so let me turn it on. Welcome to use the sweeping robot. And you can see the lights flashing away just over here. Now, if I click the button saying confirm indicator rapidly blink. So now it's asking for access to devices location, so I'll select allow only while using the app. Coming back now and going back in, there you go, the Wi-Fi is selected. Now, next I need to enter in my Wi-Fi password off camera. So I've entered in my Wi-Fi password and also just to note, it highlights that the fact it just works on 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi, not five gigahertz. So let's click confirm. Now it's highlighting the same thing again, the fact it's only 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi supported. Let's click continue and let's give it a moment to connect. There you go, it's added in. So robot vacuum cleaner. And if I click done, this is what we're presented with. So let me go back a moment. So this is how it looks on the app itself. Just a picture of the vacuum and it says robot vacuum cleaner. If I click on there and this is the interface for it. If I click here in the corner, you can see information regarding it. So you can rename it if you wanted to. So at the moment it's just called robot vacuum cleaner. You can change the icon. Next, you've got device information. So this would be IP address and MAC address information on there. Then you've got tap to run and automation, so you can set up your own customized automation for it. Then you've got third-party control. So these are all the third-party controls it can work with. Next, you've got device offline notification, so this will notify you if the device does go offline. Next, you've got share device, so you can share it with other people. Create group, so you can group multiple devices together. FAQ and feedback, and then you've got check device network. Coming down, then you've got check for firmware upgrade. Then you've got remove device, and right at the bottom in gray, you've got restore factor defaults. Let's come back. You can see everything grayed out and there's a power button there. If I click the power button. Welcome to use the sweeping robot. Now you can see some options available. You've got a play button. If I click that. Enter standardized cleaning mode. So that enters the cleaning mode. Start charging. It's charging at the moment. As soon as I stopped it. If you look at the bottom, you've got different modes there. So you've got auto mode, random mode, spot mode, edge mode, and recharge mode. Coming down, you've got suction on there, and as you can see, you've got no standard mode, strong mode, and done. Then you've got water level, so that's low, medium, and high, and that's the mopping level, the water coming out of there. So click done to that. Then we have schedule. If I click on that, you've got an add button. Clicking on that, you can set a time, and then you've got repeat. So at the moment, it's set to once. If I click on there, you've got all the days of the week, so you can set it to go off on certain days. Next, you've got a note, so you can put a note against this schedule. Notification, so you can be notified when it starts. On is just the status you want, so you could have it turning on at this time and turning off at a specific time. And then at the bottom, you've got auto mode. And this will be starting off a clean. Okay, and then you just click save, coming back from there and then back from there. So at the bottom, you've got a power button to turn it on and off. Okay, and that's it. That's all the options you have available on here. Very straightforward to set up as you've seen, and the options aren't too complex. Very simple to navigate around. Let's test out mopping with the vacuum. So let's fill up the water tank here. So I'm at my sink. There you go. Filled it up to a certain amount. Now from my phone, you can see the vacuum's turned off. If I press the power button. Welcome to use the sweeping robot. Let's change the water level to high. And let's hit the play button. Entry mopping mode. There you go. So it says it's entered mopping mode. And if you look now, water's coming out. Quite a lot of water came out of there, as you can see. Probably best not to start mopping mode directly off the dock. So you saw the water that came out. Cleaning work has been completed. Start recharging. Okay, so it's saying it's completed. You can see a few areas it's missed. And it's going to recharge now. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put it back onto auto and see what it does. Entry 
Okay, there you go. So it's covered some of the additional parts. It's missed out just up there, but looks very strange. It's actually missed out an area here. So perhaps it doesn't clean as close to the dock. So let's list the dock again and we'll have a closer look at how it's done. Start charging. There you go, start charging. So as you can see, the sides have been missed out and coming in closer. It's not too bad. Some bits have been missed, as you can see, just over there. It hasn't gone edge to edge. That's fine. But in terms of water, a large amount of water, obviously, I've gone for the high on there just to see how it would do. So not too bad. Just a shame it didn't do the area near the dock. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to move the dock away and I'm just going to initiate a clean and see what it does. Okay, so I've moved the dock. Let me initiate a clean. Entry marking mode. Cleaning work has been completed. So there you go, prove the point that it's best not to have the dock in the bathroom area when the robot vacuum is cleaning. So in terms of cleaning, it's actually covered all the area now, as you can see. It's gone quite close to the side there as well, and it's stopped once it's done. So it's not even trying to return back to the charging dock. Looking at the edges here, there's some left, but generally a good job done. Couple of things to highlight after mopping. Obviously when it mops, it only mops. There is no space in this container to extract any dust as it's going along. In terms of mopping, if I take the pad off, you can see nice amount of dirt has come off the floor itself. And just to highlight, there are some wet patches on the vacuum itself. So once you use, probably worth giving it a wipe down so it's nice and dry. And there's a close up of how it is underneath once it's mopped. Next, let's see how the robot vacuum performs on multiple surfaces. So at the moment, it's on a wooden floor. There's a threshold there and there's a carpet just ahead of that. Now on the app, if I now click auto mode. Enter standardized cleaning mode. Suction wise, oh, you can see it's jump over. Let's go to strong mode. No problem at all just climbs the threshold really easily and mounts the carpet as well. See some foam pads here. Same thing again, no issues at all. So in terms of going over different surfaces, it does it well. And this is an interesting one. It's just gone, up, gone below the TV stand Let's see if it's got stuck or not. Okay, it's struggling a little bit here. Okay, so now it's asking to move to an open area. Okay, so just be aware if there's anything similar sort of height, it can possibly get stuck underneath it. Next, let's test out the robot vacuum in a kitchen area. So the cupboards just ahead are quite low and there's a slight height difference towards that end. So it may struggle to clean underneath it. So let's start it off. I'm going to click auto mode. Enter standardized cleaning mode. There you go, and you can see it just tapping the cupboard, just trying to get underneath, and obviously it can't, so it's just slowly working its way down. There you go, so it's found an area now it can enter, and it's just working underneath where the kickboard is. And there you go, works really well, and obviously it is tapping against the side of the cupboard just to see if it can get underneath it and when it can gets underneath and obviously brushes it away so there you go works really well as you can see so it did tap against 
the cupboard area just to see if it could get underneath it. When it couldn't, it just carried on moving on to the next part. And then when it could get underneath it, it did slot in. And the brushes at the side does clean away the dust that's underneath there. So good functionality in a kitchen area. For our next test, let's test out the robot vacuum on a first floor landing. So you can see it there. The step area is just here and let's see how it copes and whether or not it falls. Now on the app itself, I just click auto mode. Let's change the suction to strong mode. Let's give it some time to map out the area and work its way around. Oh, it just stopped there. I was a little bit nervous about it, but it's done well. Cleaning work has been completed. There you go, it's done well. So it's cleaned the whole area, and as you can see, systematically covering it. One bit, you can see a bit of dust. There's some little bits that have been left behind, but reasonably well. And with the landing itself, having a step, it didn't struggle and it didn't fall down either, which is a good sign straight away. Next, let me go through the remote control. So you've got a standby button there. You've got a back to charging dock button, random mode here in terms of cleaning, and then fixed point mode there for cleaning. Wi-Fi connect is here, so if you press this, it will actually remove it from the app. So I don't know why they've put that there. I guess it's okay if you're initially setting it up, but if you do accidentally press it, you will end up having to add it back into the app. Next, you've got direction controls here, and you can manually control the vacuum yourself. In the middle, you've got a play and pause button, and this will start and stop the vacuum. Coming down here, you've got sweeping mode, then you've got mop mode, then we have along the wall edge mode, and then suction control here. So minimum to maximum. Let's test this out then. So if I now press the play button. Welcome to use the sweeping robot. Enter standardized cleaning mode. Here you go, start it up. Now if I hit pause, go back. You can see what I mean by manually controlling this now. Doesn't seem to do much as I'm using this. Try it again. So yeah, responsiveness wise and what it does doesn't seem consistent with what's on the actual controller. Next, you've got sweeping mode. If I click that. Enter standardized cleaning mode. If I increase Strong now. Mode. Strong mode. Strong mode. If I press it again. And let's go for the edge cleaning. So there you go. The remote does work, does work well, but the only thing to note is the controls here to control it yourself don't work very well. I press that. So that should send it back to the dock. And if I press that, it'll stop it. Let's let it come back. Next, I wanted to demonstrate the fact the vacuum can work with the Smart Life app. So I've got the Smart Life app installed here. If I click on that, you can see all the items I currently have. And now if I click on the plus, same thing as before, we just go to small home appliances, robot vacuum, and confirm indicator rapidly blink. And looking on the top, it isn't. So if I take the remote and I press the button here, you can see the light subtly flashing away in the background. So now that's ready to accept a config. So if I click the button here now. Next, we've got to enter in our Wi-Fi details. Mine's cached in, so I can just click confirm now. And let's give it a moment. Succeed in connecting sweeper. 
there you go added in straight away so robot vacuum cleaner click done and interface is exactly the same as you can see clicking on settings and again all exactly the same so no different by using their app which is home flow or using smart life and the same applies with two years well it will work straight away with that next let me show how to set up the robot vacuum cleaner to work with both the google home and the amazon alexa so i've got my devices set up right here first of all let's start with the google home so if i click on the home app here click in the corner there go to assistant settings assistant and home control next if i click the plus icon and we search for the service called smart life now i've got my one added in already if you haven't obviously find it add it in it'll ask you for your credentials for the application enter them in and then the service will link in so now if i go back and now if i scroll down to the bottom you can see that robot vacuum cleaner so if i click on that appears with the name clicking on settings you can rename it if you wanted to or even unlink it if i now come back you've got a play button and there's an on button below that and you can add it to a room so that's all the options you have available I can control it from here as well so if I click there Enter standardized cleaning mode. so I quickly paused it before it did anything more and if we put it back again and now if I unmute my Google home the microphone is back on I can say turn on robot vacuum cleaner Okay, turning the robot vacuum cleaner on. Stop robot vacuum cleaner. Stop robot vacuum cleaner. Okay, stopping the robot vacuum cleaner. How easy was that? So linked it in and you can start it off and stop it just by using voice controls. So very simple to set up and configure and also use as well. Next, let me show how to get this robot vacuum cleaner working with the Amazon Alexa. So I've got the Amazon Alexa app here. If I click on that, click in the corner there, go to skills and games, and we want to search for smart life. That's the skill we're after. Mine's currently enabled. If yours isn't, enable it. Enter in your credentials for your account, which is either home flow or smart life, and then it will link in to the skill. And now if we click on devices, and now if we come along click on all devices and there you have it robot vacuum cleaner and now on here you don't have any options available as you can see you can rename it if you wanted to and also just highlights the fact it's linking in with smart life as well so now if i unmute my alexa and now i can say turn on robot vacuum cleaner okay Turn off robot vacuum cleaner. Okay. There you go. As simple as that to control via the Amazon Alexa and very simple to set up as well. Only thing to note with both Google Home and the Amazon Alexa, you're only limited to start and stop operations, nothing beyond that. Next, let's test out controlling the vacuum via the phone. So if I press here, I can get it going back so it's in small bursts as you can see I'm holding on to it and it will stop click the turn that doesn't seem to do anything other than go back same with the turn there and going forward does the same so similar functionality to how the remote does it so not very consistent and not something you'd really use next let's test out spot mode so if I click that So that will start cleaning from a fixed area and go around in a circle going bigger and bigger. Next, let's test out edge mode. So if I click that now. Enter along wall cleaning mode. And there you go. It just works its way around the room and cleans the edges. Next, let's test out random mode. So if I click there. So it doesn't systematically clean in straight lines it just randomly goes around the room cleaning up the area okay so for our next test what we're going to do we've got some flour 
on the floor here, on our wooden floor, and this wooden floor hasn't got a lacquered finish. It's a brushed and oiled finish on there, so there's fine grain going along there. So this is quite a good test to see how it performs. So what I generally do when I've done tests like this before is just gently just wipe it into the area, and then we can just kick off the vacuum and see how it does. So if I turn it on... Welcome to use the sweeping robot. And I'm going to select spot mode. Enter fixed point cleaning mode. So there you go. You can see it's gone over it multiple times, but it's not able to pick up the final bits. If I zoom in... Cleaning work has been completed. There you go. So I'm going to give it one more chance. So if I zoom out for a moment... I'm going to get the robot vacuum right over it, place it as close to the area as possible. Let's give it one more chance. I'm going to click spot mode again and maximum suction. So it's on strong mode now. So it's gone over it a few times. Let me pause it now. And let's come in close just so you can see. And no, that hasn't helped. So you can see it's still stuck into the grain. So this is a good test. If you do have flooring like this, at least you get an idea what to expect. If you've got fine dust or something in the actual grain, if it can pull it out. And flour is a good example of testing how well it can perform in these areas. Okay, so you've seen the unboxing and setup of this robot vacuum cleaner by HomeFlow. Excellent build to this in terms of setup. It's very simple to set up and configure. I like the fact that you're not limited to just using their app, which is the HomeFlow app. You can also use Smart Life and Tuya with this. In terms of configuring it and using it, you can set a schedule so you can get it on timer and automatically turning on. Cleaning ability wise, it can vacuum at different suction levels and mopping wise it can do a similar thing where mopping levels can be set in terms of water coming out. One thing I didn't like was the fact that when you're mopping you can't vacuum at the same time. I think it would have been nice if it had a small area just to vacuum up some dust. So if you have forgotten to vacuum up before you're mopping it doesn't just push the dust around. In terms of functionality it doesn't map out the area onto the app itself, but internally it maps it out and systematically does clean it and cleans it well. Now looking underneath, another thing to highlight, when the side brushes are running, it actually just pushes the dust into the area. Now effectiveness wise, it seems reasonably good, but I think it's probably better if there's a brush as well. So when you have the brush, it actually touches the carpet, for instance, and pulls it in. But again, it depends on how well these brushes can grab the dust and push it towards that. So there you go. I hope it's helped anyone thinking of purchasing this. Details are in the description below. Thanks for viewing and don't forget to like, comment and subscribe.